Good afternoon. My name is Derek Dubois, and I'm a first year PhD student here at the University of Rhode Island. And today, I'd like to talk about the innovative potential of generative AI to serve as a knowledge translation tool. By generative AI, I'm referring to those newly emerging artificial intelligence systems that mimic human responses. And when taking the perspective of higher education, if I was drafting a research paper today, I'd likely start with a few lines that sound like this. While AI systems excel at generating realistic text, images, even audio and video, there's growing apprehension about its impact on academic integrity, intellectual property rights, and the authenticity of scholarly work. Additionally, there are ethical concerns about the manipulation of data and the potential for bias within AI algorithms. Not a bad start, I hope. Let me let you in on a little secret. I didn't actually write that. Generative AI did. All that I had to do was navigate to a website, give it a simple prompt, and out pops a cogent response that could easily be lifted and shifted into a research paper. Is that plagiarism? Is that co-authorship? Is it something else entirely? Frankly, I still think we're trying to figure some of that out. But what I will admit is what the system returned here was a little clinical and dense, and so the very next thing that I asked the system to do was to give that to me again, but in an easier to understand way. And the system did, responding that AI systems are really good at making text and pictures and sounds that look real. But some people worry about how this might affect honesty in schools and who owns ideas and whether or not scholarly work is real. It goes on from there, you get the idea. The point that I'm trying to make here is that these generative AI systems can tailor their responses to the recipient at their appropriate level. Writer Naomi Klein shares this wonderful anecdote about Australian singer-songwriter Nick Cave. Uh, and all you need to know about Nick is that he's got this incredible voice and unique songwriting style. And a fan of his recently went to a generative AI platform and asked the system to produce a song in the style of the artist. And the system did. It went out into the universe of ones and zeros and it scoured Nick Cave's catalog and it synthesized a song that when the artist was presented with it, he called it replication as travesty, a grotesque mockery of what it means to be human, only the way that Nick Cave could write it. What this anecdote and the earlier response from generative AI point to is that there is a list of growing concerns. Are teachers gonna lose their jobs? Are all students gonna start plagiarizing? Is the system riddled with bias to the point that it exacerbates inequality? What about all of this creative and intellectual misuse? I'm sure you've all read stories in the news about individuals receiving fabricated robocalls from the president or other high up political officials designed to sway elections. These issues are real. I'm not looking to downplay them at all. But we have good researchers on the front lines making solid recommendations such as tighter regulatory frameworks and improved algorithmic transparency that should go a long way. I'm simply suggesting that today we expand the conversation to focus on some of the system's innovative potential. I recently spent 20 years in industry, uh, most recently as a leader of some teams in a healthcare organization, but I can probably count on one hand the number of times that either myself or any of my colleagues went directly to an academic journal when we faced a day-to-day -day problem, even though scholarly research likely held the answers to many of our problems. What this points to is a concept that we often discuss in academia called the theory-practitioner gap. And this concept suggests that there's essentially two groups of people. On the theory side, you have academics and researchers who are working out of universities and think tanks forwarding research. On the practitioner side, you essentially have anybody trying to get the job done. If a CEO is trying to determine whether or not to bring their workforce back into the office after a global pandemic, do they consult the research? Do they even know where to find it? If they found it, do they know how to interpret it? Right? So this concept, this theory practitioner gap, essentially suggests that these two groups symbiotically need one another, but they often fail to communicate effectively because they speak fundamentally different languages. 
I believe the theory practitioner gap can be addressed with generative AI. Let me tell a quick story. At the top, I, noticed, I noted that I was a first year PhD student. That means that I have essentially moved from the practice side of the equation to the theory side of the equation, right? And I was sitting in my first methods course and the teacher's at the front of the room going on about a very complicated subject, the differences between convergent and discriminant validity, right? And in that moment, I'm trying to keep up. I've got my notebook and my pen, almost like I have an abacus off the side of my desk. And I'm imposter syndrome setting in. Did I really make the right choice leaving the workforce to come back to school? Maybe I'm not cut out for this. But I looked around the room at all of those students who are approximately half my age, and they had panic in their eyes as well. Grad school's meant to be tough, it's okay. Except the kid next to me, slumped low in his chair, in a hoodie, big laptop screen in front of his face. At first, I didn't even think he was paying attention. But then I noticed that he was asking a generative AI platform for the difference between convergent and discriminant validity. And the system was giving him real-time responses that met him at his level. Light bulb moment. Oh my God, the technology has progressed so far that we all have tutors in our pockets. Wow. So how can generative AI address the theory practitioner gap? I believe that practitioners should be leaning into this system to ask it their questions and concerns on a day-to-day -day basis because the system is powerful enough to go scour the mountain of research that is out there and synthesize in a jargon-free way all the findings that exist so far on a particular topic. I also believe that the system can find within that mountain of research what best generalizes down to the particular circumstance of that individual. Arguably, most importantly, I believe that the system should be able to discriminate effectively between good, rigorous science and pseudoscience. Additionally, this is not a unidirectional flow. I suggest that academics use this system as well to probe as to what are the major concerns practitioners are asking on a regular basis, because it is incumbent on us to ensure that our research is not only rigorous, but relevant as well. And disclaimer, I, I am not at any point suggesting that generative AI replaces the role of good research, but I do believe it can fundamentally emerge as a communication mediator and start to close this theory practitioner gap by building a bridge from those who work to create the knowledge to those who need to consume the knowledge. And in doing so, I believe we can get a lot more stuff done. Thank you very much for your time.